Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be revisiting the Nintendo GameCube, and this console is one of the best that was produced in the early 2000s. I love it. I have one myself, and uh, we're going to be talking about a mod that adds functionality to some versions of the GameCube. So Nintendo released two versions. There's the Doll 100, which has a digital port on the back and a analog port on the back. And then there's a system like this, which is the DAL 101, which only has the analog port. So as you can probably tell from the footage here, this particular unit is like absolutely mint. It looks like it's never been used before. The owner of this has taken excellent care of it. And so what they want to do is they want to add extra functionality to it. So it already has the GC loader optical disc emulator, which lets you play games from an SD card. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a digital port in place of that analog port. That allows them to use devices like the Carby to get an HDMI signal out of this and get the highest possible quality out of your GameCube. Okay, well, let's get started. But first, let me take a couple of seconds for a word from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs. They offer very high quality prototype PCBs, and they also do larger scale projects. They offer excellent service, and they have fast delivery times. They also have a shared projects section where you can browse through lots of really cool DIY projects that you can make for yourself, including this power cleaner modification for the Game Boy Advance. So I highly recommend that you check out the link in the video description and give PCBWay a try. Okay, so back to this week's project. Okay, so to get started, we have to disassemble the GameCube. And I already went ahead and removed the uh, four game bit screws that are at the bottom. You just need a special screwdriver like this to do that. And from here, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and remove all of these Phillips screws. And there's a couple of small ones over here. It's two small, four small ones over here. And um, once we get to that, we will get to the, to the motherboard. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just remove this little heat sink here. So I went ahead and removed the six screws that hold it down to the motherboard, but now it's attached with some thermal pads that are you know, pretty nicely adhered to a couple of different chips on the board. You have to be careful when pulling this off. If you're not careful, you can actually damage a couple of little tiny components here on this side. What I do is I just take my, my flush cutters and I just slide them under here, and then I twist either clockwise, counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. You just have to be gentle. And it loosens up the adhesive that's holding it down. So you see, that's that's all it took. And there we go. Nice and clean. And uh, I did it on the taller side because, as I said, here's those small components I was talking about. And they can easily get torn up if you're not careful. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do here is remove the original analog video port. So there's more than one way to do this. You can use a hot air gun to to loosen this up and remove it. You can also use a desoldering gun to do the same thing. What I'm gonna use today is chip quick because that's a pretty cheap and easy method if you don't have that other kind of hardware. Um, and it works pretty effectively and minimizes your chances of doing any damage. So the way that it works is that you have to take some uh, special flux that comes with the chip quick kit. And you just kind of put some all over the region where you're gonna work like that. And then all you need is the special chip quick solder, which is like a low temperature solder. And then from there, all we're going to do is just, um, oops, we're just going to, oh, sorry for the camera shake there. We're just going to apply that to the whole area. And so now I'm just going to run my iron across the analog port. And you can see that this stuff doesn't, harden up quickly like normal solder does. It stays liquid. So it mixes in with the original solder there and it forces everything to stay liquidy. And that means it's gonna be much easier now to remove the port. I might need something like a pair of pliers to hold the port as it gets hot because you know the ground plane is getting heated up, everything's getting heated up, but let's see. I definitely recommend this stuff. People don't know about it, but it makes removal jobs in many cases very easy. And compared to buying a $300 desoldering iron, 
it's a definitely a cheaper option. Okay, so the analog port got removed successfully and I just used some alcohol and Q-tips to clean everything up and I um, used some solder braid to just get rid of the chip quick and so you can see it looks nice and clean now, no issues over there. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove two components, these little, uh, I think they're capacitors, um, yeah they are. So we're just going to go ahead and remove those because they get in the way of the flex cable. So we're just going to add a little bit of solder to both ends. These come off very easily. Now that they're gone, what we're going to do is we're going to just add a little bit of flux here and get some solder braid back. And I'm just going to cl clean up these pads just so that everything's nice and flat. All right. So I'm just going to clean this up with some alcohol and then now we're going to move on to installing the flex cable. Okay, so we're getting ready now to install the flex cable and so you can see I have it aligned on this side of a chip. This chip is the analog to digital converter on the GameCube, so we're just tapping into the digital signals. What you want to do is you want to start by tinning two places over here because it does anchor down here and there's two points here that it needs to tap into and then from there you can go ahead and uh, start soldering the rest, but it's specifically like a little via here and a, and a test pad. So I'm going to start by pre-tinning those to make things easier. All right, so now it's time to finish the installation of the flex cable. Uh, the one thing you gotta keep in mind about soldering to the ADC is that you need to use lead-free solder because apparently this entire board is done with lead-free and you're not supposed to mix leaded and lead-free. I normally use leaded for everything because it's way easier, but in this case, I'm gonna make an exception. All right, so the next thing we need to do is solder this board onto the flex. And so you have to keep in mind there are three large vias here, and those need to line up with places on the analog port. So specifically, these two are sound, uh, left and right channel audio, and I believe this one here is composite video. And you've also got to make sure that these castellations are aligned so that they, they fit with the pads on the flex. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to... This might be easier for those of you that are right-handed, because I am a lefty, so it's going to make things a little trickier, I think. Sorry if my hand is in the way. All right, so I've cleaned everything up with some alcohol, and so now the last thing that we've got to do is just install this flex cable here. So to do that, you just lift up this latch and you place it in with the blue side facing up towards you. 
that. And then you've got to make a series of folds to, um, to get this set up properly. So first thing you want to do is a fold like this, like it's kind of like a 90 degree angle over here. You don't want to push too hard because you'll, you'll break the connections on this cable if you do something like that. So that's the first thing. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tuck it in under itself like this and then place this back in. So the really critical thing is just making sure it stays clear of this area because we don't want it to bump into that and um, get kinked as it gets mounted back into the shell. All right, so I think that's all set and we're actually all done with um, the bottom of this uh, system. So let's go ahead and start reassembling things. Okay, so at this point we need to prepare the RF shield so that we can take that flex cable and slide it up from under here and it doesn't get in the way of anything. So first thing we gotta do is just trim off a little bit of the shield right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just snip it off. Nope, I'm actually taking more than I expected, but that's fine. This will not get in the way. Okay, that's not exactly what I intended, but again, it's not going to interfere. I really just wanted clearance here so that nothing gets in the way of and crimps that cable. All right, so in addition to removing this little bit of RF shield, we also have to get rid of two components here, these little pieces of plastic, these posts. They get in the way of the audio jack, so I'm just going to snip that off. We're also going to get rid of this screw post right here. It's not needed for what gets in the way, and honestly, they have so many posts here that it's fine. So now you can see that the flex cable comes in and nothing really gets in its way whatsoever. All right, so we're just about done here. And what we're gonna do next is, this is the, the PCB that's going to attach to that flex cable. You can see the little socket right here where it goes in. So this is the connector, and I don't know if it's coming up clear on camera, but it's very, very straight, like, you know, 90 degree angles. And this isn't really ideal for inserting a connector because it's, you know, kind of a rough edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bevel it out on both sides. So to do that, I just have a little metal file right here. And all we've got to do is just run it along the file, and um, that should do the trick. Well, now the edge is much softer and rounded, and so that's just going to mean that the uh, the carby or whatever you know adapter goes in here, or the you know GameCube component cables, they're just not going to get damaged from repeated insertion and removal. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and get started with mounting it to the GameCube. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more case modification because um, this top shield does not fit anymore because of these new components. And so, as you can clearly see here, so we, we need to remove some material on this side and over here on this side. We also need to clear out some here on the top so it doesn't crush this flex cable that we've just installed. So let's go ahead and do some trimming of the metal top shield. All right, so the shielding has been opened up and you know, I definitely took off more than I needed to, but it really doesn't matter because the important thing is just that nothing is bumping against the components. And so you can definitely see that the flex cable has plenty of room to move and these components here aren't getting touched by anything. So the last thing we gotta do here is we need to drill a hole so that the audio jack has a place to live. Thankfully, that's very easy. So the kit also comes with a little 
drill guide post here. And so you just kind of snap it into the AV port like this, and it gives us a little hole here. And so I'm going to take a small uh, drill bit, push it through here, and that gives me just a pilot hole. And from there, I'm just going to enlarge it so that it can fit the, the audio jack. Okay guys, so I'm back and I'm actually at my friend JJ's house and um, he has his own YouTube channel called New York Retro City which has a whole bunch of awesome stuff including these three TVs right here which you've seen on my channel which I've repaired in the past. And so I'm just going to pan over here really quick and so here is the, uh, the GameCube and I came over because I don't have a Carby and um, I needed one to test this thing out. So you can see I have it plugged into the new digital port and just going from HDMI to the television and it looks absolutely stunning. So it, it's as good as you could possibly get on a GameCube. And uh, yeah, if you have a really nice uh, DAW 101 version of the GameCube like this, then I really recommend this mod because it gives you the best possible video quality on, on that version of the console. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's video. So if you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I've got videos out every Friday, and uh, if you have any repairs or um, consoles that you need modified, then you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Okay, thanks so much, guys. I will talk to you next time.